Hello, amazing people. Welcome to our chance, amazing world. And today, I am here with you for another storytelling moment. Are you ready? All right. So, what have you been doing today? Can you share it with me? What have you been doing? Mm -hmm. I can hear you. Just say it. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, that's nice, that's nice. I actually heard you, hmm, you have no idea. All right, just, that's just by the way. So today, I'm going to tell us a story. I mean, a story I created, right? And it happened in Sizeland. Have you heard of that land before? I think I'm the only person who knows that place. Should I tell you more about that place? All right, so let's listen to the story I had to share. And it's about Sizeland, like I said. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Guess what? It's full of animals. I mean, any animal you can think about, you're surely going to find it in Sizeland. Now, can you tell me of five birds that you know of? Yes, five birds. Okay, start. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you tried. You tried. Yeah, I saw that. You tried. Okay. So, once upon a time in the land called Sizeland, there lived all sort of animals. I mean, every kind of animal. You're surely going to find it there. You have the giraffes, the monkeys, the dogs. I mean, any animal you can think about lived in Sizeland. And they they had a whole lot happening in there so in Sizeland, mr elephant was a trader he was actually selling uh, buckets bowls and all that and mr ant was actually a builder he was actually an architect so he, he was building a whole lot of things you know and when you think about ants you know ants are really skilled when it comes to building right yeah they do so well with that. And there was Mr. Giraffe, Mr. Tiger, Lion, Monkeys, Crocodiles. Every other animal was there in Sizeland. And it was season. So most during that time, most animals had already harvested their crops. Some of them had their crops in sacks, trying to save them. Others were drying their corn. Others too were, I mean, trying to package their peanuts. Others were trying to, you know, play around. I mean, just having fun. You know, the weather is always good during that time. So one day, Mr. Tiger decided to visit Mr. Elephant. So Mr. Elephant was sleeping and just heard this at the door. Coco, coco, coco. Guess what? That was how Mr. Tiger was knocking. Yes, I was there and I heard it. Okay. So Mr. Elephant got up, got to the door and was like, Hey, Mr. Tiger, why were you knocking like that? Is everything okay? And Mr. Tiger was like, Oh, Elephant, I hope you're doing good. Today, I just came by. I want to borrow one of your buckets and I promise to return it. And Mr. Elephant was like, but Tiger, last week you were here. I gave you one. You never returned it. Last two weeks through, you were here to take one. You still didn't even pay for it. How can I give you another one? I don't think I'm willing to get you another one this time. I'm so sorry. That didn't sit well with Mr. Tiger. Guess what Mr. Tiger said? Hey, Elephant, you are so, so big. Elephant, how dare you tell me that? Look at your size. You are so big. That is why nobody wants to play with you. Look at you. Are you not even fortunate that I'm your friend and I'm coming over to borrow a bucket from you? Are you not even lucky? If I didn't do it, it was coming here to borrow one from you. Elephant was so sad hearing this from Tiger because all the time, that they lived together, Elephant thought Tiger was a friend. And Liz expected all these words from Tiger. But Tiger wouldn't stop talking. 
So at the point, Elephant had to just go inside the house and close the door. Now, did I tell you where the house of Mr. Tiger was situated? Well, it was just in between the house of Mr. Elephant and Mr. Ant. So when Tiger didn't get what he wanted, he moved straight to Mr. Ant's house. When he got to Mr. Ant's house, it was like, call, call, call. knocking, knocking, yes. And Ant came out. Ant was like, hey, my friend, what can I do for you today? And Mr. Tiger was like, oh, Ant, can you give me two bags of cement? I need to go and plaster some portion of my house. Ant was like, oh, Tiger, I wish I could give you two. But unfortunately, I need one. So I can just give you a bag. Tiger wasn't even pleased with that. He was like, Elif Elephant didn't give me what I wanted. And I've come to your house. And look at what you are also saying. Aunt is like, I'm so sorry. That's all I can offer. Guess what Tiger said. You this tiny, tiny, tiny aunt. You are not even cute. Are you not even happy that I'm coming to you? And Aunt got so sad. Aunt was like, what? Hey, but stand here. You wait for me. I'm not going to reply you. So Aunt went inside, brought a bag of cement and gave to Tiger. Thinking that Tiger was going to say thank you or maybe say something better than what he had said early on. Guess what? Tiger wasn't saying anything better. He rather took the cement, went away without even saying thank you. Aunt went inside and guess what happened? Aunt just just didn't know what to do when he stand in front of the mirror started looking at itself and all aunt could hear were the words that tiger said and as aunt stood in front of the mirror it got so sad it looked at his hands the legs the head and goes like oh so that is why i don't have a lot of friends oh look at me you know now aunt was believing all the words that tiger had said and it made it so sad so Tiger went to the market, still looking for helpers, but nobody was willing to help Tiger. Now guess what happened to Mr. Ant? Ant went to the market also to buy a lot of food, a lot of food because Ant had taken the words of Tiger to heart and now wanted to also grow big and tall like Tiger. So Aunt went to buy a lot of uh, every every food you can think about. Aunt got some, took it to the house, and started eating. Started eating and crying because that was not what Aunt actually wanted. But now Aunt wanted to change its size so that Tiger would not have an opportunity to talk to him like that. Aunt kept eating, eating two days, three days, four days, five days. Aunt still didn't see much change. In itself, and one evening, guess who came knocking? That was Mr. Eagle. Mr. Eagle had come visiting and saw all the food there and asked Mr. Ant what was happening. It was then that Mr. Ant told Mr. Eagle the encounter he had with Mr. Tiger and how his words had affected him. So, Mr. Eagle decided to go to the chief's palace the next day to report the situation to the chief and the elders there and they promised to call a uh, tiger during the weekend you know that was on a thursday so they said they were going to call um, mr tiger during the weekend and address the issue guess what on friday it rained so heavily it rained cats and dogs every place was super Wet, and you know mr tiger too he didn't have a whole lot of storage i mean he kept buying stuff without thinking where he was going to save them during the rainy season it was at this point that he needed help from either mr elephant or aunt but how was he going to approach them and that is how tiger lost all his sacks of food that very day he cried and cried and cried, but nobody stepped outside to look at him. On Saturday, he was summoned to the chief's palace. 
And when he got there, he was questioned about the incident with Mr. Elephant and Aunt Tiger tried denying. So the chief sent for Tiger and uh, sent for Mr. Elephant and Mr. Ant to come over to the chief's palace. They went there and Ego was there. And now at that point, Tiger could not deny it again. And guess what? He was not even remorseful. He was like, but can't we tell the truth again? Can't you look at Mr. Elephant? Mr. Ant is too tiny and not cute. Mr. Elephant is too big, too big. And then the chief and the elders and everybody present were surprised and shocked at how Mr. Tiger could say all these about Mr. Elephant and Mr. Ant. They decided to punish him and take him to the deepest part of the forest for one whole year. So that it was going, that was how it was going to learn a lesson, you know, to stay away from everyone. And at this point, Mr. Tiger didn't even have food to take along. And nobody was even willing to offer him anything good, you know. And that is how Mr. Tiger was taken to the deepest part of the forest to stay there for a year. And Mr. Tiger was at that point trying to plead, but nobody was listening to it, you know. So in size land, nobody talks about any, anybody's size. If you think you are putting on more weight than needed, you know what? Just cut down carbohydrates. I mean, that's what they did. Just cut down carbohydrates, take more water, you know, more greens, more fruits, you know, and just cut down your weight. Now, some people are big, not because they don't eat healthy. Some people are small, not because they don't eat well. Some people have no control. Some people may be having situations beyond their control. So we ought to be careful the words that we say. And we don't have to look down on people just because of the way they look per their size. After all, who is a standard? We all know that God is a standard, you know. And one beautiful thing about God is he created all of us in his own image. Yes, still, each one of us is so unique and different, right? No one is lesser than the other. No, everybody is unique and different. And that is how God made all of us. No two people are the same. If I look at your fingers, are they all the same? No, you see? Yeah, so we all ought to appreciate each other. And one thing I also wanted to talk about, nobody created their own eyes, ears, nose, head and all, you know? Yeah, so it's even wrong for us to tell somebody that, hey, look at your big nose. Oh, your nose is not nice. Your eyes are not beautiful. Um, your, your head is like this or your legs are like this, you know? Come to think of it, did they create it themselves? No. Now that we know that everyone is made in the image of God, we know that God made them unique as they are. So it is wrong for us to talk about people or say bad things about them based on their body shape, their body size, or even how their body parts appear, you know, because they didn't make themselves. And obviously those unkind words are not going to make them as we want. Okay. Yes, nobody made themselves. So everybody is made in the image of God for a purpose. And all of us are unique. We shouldn't forget that. And we should also give people power to tell us that, oh, you don't have beautiful legs. You don't have beautiful nose. No. What are they comparing it to? That is not true. We shouldn't believe those words, right? Like, uh, Mr. Tiger did to Mr. Ant, you know, when Mr. Ant went to his room, you remember what happened? Standing in front of the mirror. We should never do that. We should always remember that we are unique. We are enough and we are different. And that's how God made us. And that is okay. We don't have to change anything. We are just good as, as just as we are, you know? Yes, we're not going to buy extra stuff from anywhere to do this and this and this like Mr. Ando was trying to do. No, no, no. We are all in size land. And here we don't talk about anybody. Uh, we don't say any bad thing about anybody because we acknowledge that everybody is unique and different and enough. All right. 
Now let's go to the questions. Today, just a few questions. Number one. Number one. All right. So what kind of job was Mr. Ann doing? Do you remember? All right. So question number two. When Mr. Tiger went to Elephant's house, what was he going to borrow? And number three, who reported the incident that happened to Ant? You remember that incident? Who reported it to the chief and the elders? And the final question, what happened to Mr. Tiger in the end? all right thank you so much for watching don't forget to like share and just leave me a comment right and until we meet again next time always remember that you i mean you yes you you are so amazing all right bye